In session number two of InDesign, we're going to tackle three concepts, and we may throw a few extra things in there too, but master pages, custom colors, and swatches are the main idea. Now, if you look on DriveL in your assignments folder, I do have a handout that will help guide you a little bit on this. Here's the main idea. We're going to create a six-page spread, and the topic we're going to use is what I'm calling five great thinkers. Now I'll show you an example in a minute and this doesn't have to be terribly serious. You can do it fairly quickly. I'll get to it in a minute. Here are the required things. You're going to have to have a title page. All right. After the title page you'll have to have five additional pages so that's a total of six. Each page um, <clears throat> when you get to the five great thinkers you'll have to have a title a photo and a short paragraph. Now that's you know, just a sentence or two or is good enough. It doesn't have to be huge, but you'll have to do a little writing. We're going to work on making a layout on the master page. I'll demonstrate how to do that. You have to spell check the text in the document. I'll demonstrate how to do that. A couple of assignment notes for you here. <clears throat> in this movie, I'm going to demonstrate the basics of the assignment. You may want to create some custom colors colors that are not on the swatches panel that you want to use and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, we're going to use the rectangle frame tool when we create this layout on the master page and I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, <clears throat> once you have made these custom colors that that we're, we're talking about here, uh, you'll, you probably will want to add them to the swatches panel so that you can use them again and I'll show you how to do that. It doesn't have to be a terribly serious assignment. You'll see some of my examples in a minute and um, you know ask questions if you don't know how to do something. There's a little list of some tools that might be helpful for you. The selection tool, the text tool, the rectangle frame tool, master pages I'm going to show you, the color panel, the swatches panel. I'll show you some ways to control color. When you finish your work on this, save it on your network drive. You can really just use a file name of your choice or you could just call it five thinkers and uh, turn it in on your uh, turn in folder on drive L. Okay now next up let's go to InDesign and and take a look at a quick example uh, you're looking at mine right now here's my this is my cover page or my page one here's my page two and here's where you see it's not all that serious I've got Homer Simpson as one of the five great thinkers but you see I have a title up at the top I have a little paragraph over here on the left and a picture over here on the right now exactly how you lay it out is going to be up to you my second one is Alexander Graham Bell all right, create the telephone. If we didn't have a telephone, no cell phone, no cell phone, no texting, that would be horrible. All right, uh, the, my next page, my third great thinker, Noble Six. Uh, you know, if he hadn't done what he did, we'd been overrun by flood. And uh, if you're not a Halo fan, you're not getting it, but that's okay. Uh, my next great thinker, Albert Einstein. Then eh, this one's fairly true. Um, Albert Einstein was pretty bright guy, great thinker. And then my last one that I have on my document is the crew of Apollo 13 and all the people in mission control. I've still got this highlighted. Next time you think you have a problem, try being three quarters of the way to the moon when your spacecraft explodes. All right, so that's mine. I've got these five great thinkers, plus I have a title page up here. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get to work on this. I'm going to go ahead and hop out of InDesign and let me hide some other things here to... Just make this look a little bit better. Okay, I'm working on a Mac, so it's going to look a little bit different, but it'll work the same way on your computers at school. I'm going to start up InDesign, which you can do by going to Start and All Programs in your Adobe Design and Web Premium CS6. When I get here, I'm going to create a new document. We covered that in the first session. A new, I'm just going to use this dialog box in the middle. I'll make a new document. Now, this time I am going to use I'm going to use a portrait. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to use landscape orientation on mine. Um, it's really I guess it's really up to you. You could do it portrait, but I'm going to do mine landscape, and that's really the only thing I'm going to change here. I'm just going to set that on landscape orientation, and I will click OK. Give that a second. All right, so I, right now I'm looking at page number one of this document. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make my, I need a total of six pages. And we covered this in the first session. I just need to make some pages. And so I can come up here to the right, top right side, and click the pages panel. 
and I can use this little button down here that looks like a sheet with a corner flipped up and I can just click 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 I'll just keep going uh, there we go I got a total of six pages it shows you on these little thumbnails right here it shows you um, the number of pages you got all right and remember that when when you have two pages together they're going to be in what's called a spread so page two and page three are laying right next to each other just like they would in a book all right now we're going to get into the idea behind master pages here's what master pages do for you if you look on the pages panel just right above where you see your pages that you made i see page number one two three and the others are down there you'll see this section here there's a divider bar and there's a section excuse me there's exception a section up here for masters and and there's this thing called a master and it turns out if once you get into InDesign, you can have a b master and a c master and a d master but we're not going to mess with that we'll just keep we'll just stick with one master here so i've got this a master all right well i'm just going to do a, a double click on the left side of that a master and what happens is this anything that i lay out here on this page is going to show up on any left side page like for example if i lay out something here on the a master uh, this is it'll show up on uh, page two right down here well i'm going to use this rectangle frame tool out of the toolbar here and i'm going to create um, i'll start off just by creating this is this is where i would put like my title across the top like that now up here on the options bar across the top um, I'm gonna I'm, I want to fill this up but this is where some of the coloring ideas may come in here you know there, there's kind of a limited selection of color and you can use these but I want to show you real quick how you can create some custom colors all right if I come down to the bottom of the toolbar here and I click and it's this is a lot like Adobe Illustrator but it looks a lot smaller here if I double click on this fill color it comes up with this color picker here and, and I can kind of work on creating you know a custom color if I want a shade of blue and you can click on these little buttons and say RGB and kind of work around and and work on getting what you want all right so let's say that I want a kind of a shade is not I don't want real real navy blue but kind of a darker blue okay that's good so I've got this um, uh, I didn't really mean to do that just yet I've got this color that I want right here. That looks pretty good. And there's a button here that says add CMYK swatch. Now it could also possibly say add RGB swatch. And it, it for right now it doesn't matter that much. I just want to add a swatch. All right, so I'm going to click that. I'm going to add a swatch. Now you'll see it fills that up with blue. But the other thing that's going to do, and if I click OK, if I go over to my swatches panel, you'll see that here at the bottom of the swatches panel that color of blue has been added on there ah now I can use that color again anytime I want to and that's the nice thing about this All right, so I think I might make a couple other custom colors I'll double click here and I want um, I also want kind of a oh, kind of an orangish color let me see if I can tweak this around and get eh, it looks pretty good I kind of want to use like an orangish color so I'm going to add a swatch for that and you'll notice that this box changed but I'll take care of that in a minute and so I'll click OK there and I'll come back and double click this again and I also want kind of a goldish color so I'm just going to work with this color picker until I get kind of the colors that I want to have and I'll click OK there all right now you know as I added these swatches and they're all oh I didn't add that here let me go back here and hit add CMYK swatch okay now again you'll notice on the swatches panel if I come over here on the right hand side if I click the swatches panel these colors that I just added have been placed on the panel I'll hit okay there right there they are there's the blue one, the orange one the the gold one and that that means I can use those over and over all right which that's I kind of like that idea so I think I actually want this top one to be blue and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stroke here I want it to have a black stroke and thicken it up just a little bit and that's kind of like Adobe Illustrator all right there we go so I've got a blue with a black outline great now I'm gonna take this rectangle tool again I'm gonna make another rectangle kind of like yeah, kind of like that and exactly how you lay these rectangles out is up to you 
All right, now this one, I'm going to, I want this to be filled with this gold color, so I'll just drop that in there. And again, I'm going to give it a little outline color. I'd like for it to have a black outline. About like that, that looks good. Now I'm going to make one more rectangle here, kind of like that. You'll see these little guides even kind of help you get them the same size and all that kind of thing. And I want this one. I'm going to take this orange swatch that I made, and I want to fill that up with that orange swatch. And again, I'm going to outline that with some black. Just a couple of points is good enough, two or three points. All right, so these are just going to be areas where I'm going to lay things like text and pictures and, and that kind of thing. Now, if I go back up to my Pages panel, you'll see that that's just, that's just the left side of this. Now you're going to want to make sure if you want to use this little trick that I'm about to show you that you stay up here on the pages panel. You've got to stay up here on the master page. All right, I'm up here where it says A master. I've double clicked here on this uh, left side of the A master. And here's what could speed this up for you some. I'm just going to take my black arrow tool and select all of those frames that I made and I'm going to copy them, which you can do with edit copy or control C. Then I'm going to come and, and double click on the right side of that A master. And what I'm thinking is I could use those same little layout boxes on the over on the right side as I did on the left side. So I'll just paste those. I can do edit paste or I can do control V. Now you could also do this. Do something like take over here on this side. I could reverse the position of these like kind of like that. I could lined up a little bit better. All right, and so now if you look at my little thumbnail of my A master here, um, you'll see that I've got my layout kind of all set. All right, now here's what we're going to do. I, I'm I'm going to stop this part of the movie, and you could even get into InDesign and work on making your master layout right now if you want to, and then in part two of this movie. I will go on into all of the other little details about adding the text and adding the pictures and, and what I want you to do there. All right, so this is going to be the end of part one. The big goal here being to uh, work with these master pages up here. And in just a moment, in part two, uh, I'll get into more of exactly what happened when we did these master pages.